Hello my friends and oops I did it again and yes as you can tell from that song Charlotte Brandstrom has been confirmed as the new and most likely final director for season 1 of Amazon's Lord of the Rings TV series yes this has been now confirmed by Deadline and by Amazon so yes we revealed this I believe I'm not sure how long ago I think it was last month we said that she was involved and now we're just being confirmed today so it says Brandstrom joins Jay Biona and British Chinese director Wayne Chi Yip in helming the show, which is now being filmed in New Zealand. And the interesting thing that is, she is on for to direct two episodes of the show, as we said earlier. So it's most likely Biona gets two, Wayne Yip gets four, and now Charlotte Brandstrom gets two. Well, what has she said? She has said, quote, I am very excited to be guided through Middle Earth by JD's and Patrick's vision and immerse myself in the iconic world of J.R.R. Tolkien. It's a great privilege to be in New Zealand to work with Amazon Studios' outstanding ensemble cast of creative talents. So yes, it is all confirmed now and hopefully this is the beginning of more information that will trick from Amazon. Maybe not too many big stuff but just some more interesting stuff that fans could get excited about. But of course this isn't the only thing that we're going to be discussing in today's video as we have a lot more to get into. And the next thing that we're going to be looking at is that Jennifer Solke, the head of Amazon Studios, in an interview yesterday confirmed the 465 million US dollar budget for season 1 of the Amazon Lord of the Rings TV series. She has said, quote, The market is crazy, as you saw with the Knives Out deal, Netflix paid 469 million for two sequels. This is a full season of a huge world building show. The number is a sexy headline or a crazy headline that's fun to click on, but that is really building the infrastructure of what will sustain the whole series," Solky said. So this basically confirms that season 1 of Lord of the Rings on Prime including the cost and and basically the budget for the um, buying the rights for the show is all included and that altogether season 1 will cost Amazon around 400 and 50 around about 465 million dollars and yes of course that is still crazy how much money that is but when i made this video a few weeks ago i did I, I made two points one which is true and which one that is now false my first thing which is true is that this isn't just for one season this is for all the future seasons as well because for example if you have a set in linden that's going to be throughout all five seasons the cost of making that will be in the season one budget and not the season two three four five budget my other theory was that it could be for season two as well as they're filming back to back but that has not been included here so as of right now that probably isn't true but that may still be true in the future we have to wait for more clarity but as of right now jennifer Solke has confirmed the head of amazon studios has confirmed that season one will actually be 465 around that million dollars but that is just for the because the show is going to be so massive there's gonna be so much world building as she has directly mentioned there that there's so much to explore and so much to build because of that which is why the budget is so big and then future seasons they will it will lots of more stuff will be resolved as a lot of things built for this future season will be in the season one budget Jennifer Solke went on to say quote but it is a crazy world and various people on the zoom mostly Bela Barjaria, I think that's the Netflix head, and me have been in bidding situations where it starts to go incredibly high. There's a lot of wooing and we are we have to make decisions on where we want to stretch and where we want to draw the line. Well it seems like here for Amazon show, they for the Lord of the Rings show in fact they have stretched a lot, Amazon have. And I think what they're referring to is that knives out did cost a lot for the rights. So the rights is included in this four hundred and sixty five million dollar budget. And also, regarding more Lord of the Rings, she said, quote, As for how many people need to watch Lord of the Rings, a lot, laughs, must be very funny laugh, a giant global audience needs to show up to at his an appointment television, and we are pretty confident that that will happen. So yes, 
they have seen maybe this doesn't show um, that much about the marketing strategy but it does look like they are betting a lot on this show and why wouldn't they it's the most expensive show of all time and having it as appointment television maybe suggests that the show will be released weekly so it's not going to be more like a streaming platform show they want it to be traditional shows so episodes release weekly like game of thrones etc so they want to follow suit for that the next thing that we're going to be discussing is actually something quite controversial as there has been quite a lot of backlash and speculation around what happened and came out yesterday as Jeff Bezos the creator of Amazon of course the richest person in the world and of course of the other branches like Amazon Studio etc came out some book quotes came out from his book where he said and it stated quote Amazon Studios executives had to send Bezos regular updates on the projects in development that included spreadsheets describing how each show had each storytelling element, the book says. If any of the elements were missing, they had to explain why. So yes, there has been quite a lot of backlash and controversy towards this thing, as there are of course positives and negatives, more probably more on the maybe negative side, but what positives are there? So this is great if if Jeff Bezos is a massive Tolkien fan and nerd and wants the best for the show and that if for the uh, Amazon show he's maybe asking what elements are missing maybe if the showrunners aren't including something but at the same time the second age is how many pages of storytelling and writing from Tolkien's pen not a lot so I don't think that can really be applied in the show unless they miss a massive event because I don't think that can really apply to Amazon show as hardly anything is written about the second age but what it does look like and, and what I can see it looks like that that Jeff Bezos he is an excellent ex okay I know this <laughs> yeah I know of Amazon and Jeff Bezos there is of course is how you really regard him but from a businessman being able to create Amazon for the business side, of course, I know not all his business, whether like how he pays people, etc., is the best. But from building up a business, he's an excellent businessman. But with shows, Hollywood, etc., does he have to have this much of a control and looking over everything that's happening? Maybe is that maybe just your boss just looking over you and maybe being a bit annoying? Because what really are Jeff Bezos's um, like qualifications, etc.? over the show and over hollywood and just television and films etc so yeah that may might seem a bit maybe going a bit too far and radical from jeff bezos but then that it doesn't stop there as he also gave a list of demands that he wants from his shows which includes lord of the rings on prime so jeff bezos gave a list of 12 demands that he wants from his amazon originals and shows and the first one is a heroic protagonist who experiences growth and change, to a compelling antagonist, three wish fulfillment, e.g. the protagonist has hidden abilities such as superpowers or magic. So yes, those are the first three, and of course, it does seem pretty basic. And of course, these are these are important. Of course, there's ways to have these parts, but it's nothing groundbreaking. It's just basic guidelines. But of course, we can't fault him for wanting to have this in his show. Then moving on to the next one, it says moral choices, which of course is important for shows, then the diverse world building, different geographical landscapes. And of course, we're going to be seeing this a lot in the Amazon show because there's so many places in Middle Earth that we are going to be visiting. Numenor, Linden, Khazadum, we might be going to the far reach of the map, which means Harad maybe, maybe an Edwaith. We've got a region, of course, Lodian, so many places we're going to be seeing. So that won't be a problem. Number six is urgency to watch next episodes or cliffhangers. So maybe more suspense he wants in the show. So maybe them not to be take oh say for example where you're watching a show and it says oh you have to take six, seven episodes to fully get into it. Maybe sometimes that happens with Netflix shows, etc. Maybe HBO shows. But what I think um he's saying here is that we want you to get gripped within the first episode. And of course I think Amazon uh, would need to do this for Lord of the Rings on Prime to take viewers and something big has to happen in episode one or two to grab viewers in for the rest of the season and to have a big talking point but then moving on to seven eight and nine seven is civilization high stakes a global threat to humanity like i think it's meant to say threat to an, like an alien invasion or a devastating pandemic the second bit is quite ironic but 
the first bit I think maybe what we can take from that if we want to apply this to the Amazon Lord of the Rings show is of course the forging of the rings the high stakes of giving the ring etc of course you can apply this to the downfall of Numenor as well because it is literally a what's it called it's a devastation that he's put there the whole world is reshaped and tie in Numenorean immense civilization for about over 3,300 years is destroyed into the sea. Next is 8 humor and 9 betrayal. Of course, humor maybe that can be applied to the show as well, but of course, we'll have to see how Amazon handle the humor in the show. Betrayal, yeah, that's standard stuff in shows as well, nothing too much there. 10 positive emotions, love, joy, hope. 11 negative emotions, loss and sorrow. And 12, of course, violence. And just saying, luckily, and a positive thing for Tolkien fans is that. On those 12, there's no nudity or sex scenes that have been mentioned at all. So maybe even though this list is basically, uh, I wanted a uh, shout out to Penguin Poppins, my um, podcast co-host, where he actually gave this example, so I'm nabbing this for him, is basically, let's say, for a soccer team or a football team, you are a coach, is saying, you have to score more goals, we need to get the ball forward, the goalkeeper needs to make a save, it's basically that positive emotions love joy hope negative emotions loss and sorrow is basically the same thing these are standard things that have to be met so nothing too much there but maybe positive thing is that there's no nudity or sex that has been mentioned in that list but yeah i can see the problems with um jeff bezos wanted to maybe people thinking that why does he have to keep on looking over it maybe when he doesn't have as much experience is it just the maybe the billionaire going in and is checking over anything but of course everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But that wraps up everything in today's video. We have covered all the most recent news that has come out in the last 48 hours around the show. Yes, a lot of things, for example, Jennifer Solke's comments. And uh, that was quite interesting, confirming the budget and talking about how this is also including the rights to get the show and having to set up places and scenes and sets etc for future seasons that is included in this first budget. Then the controversy of Jeff Bezos and how involved he wants to be in the shows and for all his Amazon shows and Lord of the Rings of Prime is of course included as it is an Amazon original. And then we looked at his demand. And of course, Charlotte Brandstrom being um, confirmed is always a great thing. Again, maybe showing that my, um, just showing that maybe a lot of the stuff I say is that I always try to make it true and confirm, but I don't give out just random information that I always like to verify and fact check before I release my updates. And hopefully that helps my validity as well. But as always, nothing can happen like this. I can't be doing this without you guys and your support as always. So thank you and thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. But until the next video, my friends, goodbye.